Yo, what's up people? It's Urban Aesthetics UK here, back again with another amazing video. Uh, and also, don't forget to like, uh, like and subscribe if you enjoy my content. Today we'll be talking about Koi genetics and genealogy. Let's go! Now today I'm talking about a subject I'm really passionate about. It's called genealogy, so the study of genetics, but specifically koi genetics. Now we start way back in thousands of years in Japan. They started noticing common carp with um, different colours and they selectively bred them and then we got stuff like magois, chagois, all your solid colour koi and these were called nishiki goi which means colour broaded carp but a lot of people think koi only get to like a certain size, two, three foot. Well, uh, not always, you can get a strain called Jumbo Koi, as I can represent with Big Girl over on the back. Um, she's 90 pound in weight and owned by Rainbow Koi, and she costs 30 grand. Now, Koi can cost a demand a lot of money depending on origin genetics, the breeder, whatever. Uh, the main big breeders in the world are Israeli and Japanese. So it depends on the koi. Koi can live to uh, loads of years. The average lifespan of a koi can be up to 70 years, but there is a koi called Hanako and it lived 221 years. Um, there's also different strains of koi. You can even get an albino version, which is called Akimi. And certain koi have like red eyes, blue eyes. It depends on the strain. Uh, my favorite koi at the moment, I quite like um, red eye kigois and um, a sh Jim Rinner Shubas. I have a really nice Jim Rinner Shuba that I grew up from this small. Koi don't have to cost loads of money, but depend if you want a top grade one, you're going to have to put the money in. But you can also get um, a good small one and grow up. Now, the difference between the Japanese and the Israeli so in the Japanese hobby, there's a lot of snobbery, but Israelis can be just as good, if not better, because the Japanese grade the koi four to six times. The Israeli, they only grade those three, and they're not bothered about showing and stuff. I per that's why I prefer Israeli. Even the breeders in Japan can't tell the difference between um, Israeli and Japanese. It's like it took, the Japanese took bred this koi called Snow Asagi, um, which took the uh, Japanese 20 years to produce. The Israelis did it in three. Now, if you want a good, um, if you obviously want, you've got the money spare, I'd advise Japanese, but if you want a nice koi and you want to grow it up and see how it develops, I advise Israeli. Israeli are a lot harder because the climate gets colder, but with Japanese, they're used to hotter temperature. So yeah, anyway, that's my over review on Koi Genetics. I hope you liked the video and learned something new to put towards your koi keeping or fish keeping, whether you're an advanced keeper or a just starting out in the hobby. And don't forget to like and subscribe.